This is KGW News at Noon. What we are challenged to do is to act and to resolve these matters. That is Mayor Ted Wheeler talking about the need to clean up downtown Portland. And today the city council approved a contract with the nonprofit in charge of doing exactly that. Hi everyone, I'm Brenda Braxton. The Clean and Safe program pays for security officers and sanitation workers in downtown Portland. Some critics accuse the armed security guards of harassing the homeless. The Portland Business Alliance, which oversees the program, promised to make some changes. That includes adding trained mental health outreach workers. Mayor Wheeler and three of the commissioners approved the new contract. I believe this contract provides us just one more opportunity to resolve some of the safety and livability issues that have impacted the downtown community. This process, uh, in my opinion, was not rushed. Commissioner Joanne Hardesty was the only one to vote no. The contract will cost the city about $25 million over the next five years. Washington just announced that it is about at 70% vaccination for its residents. So it's a little bit shy of that goal, actually. But that number is rising as the deadline approaches for state workers to get vaccinated. They have to get their shots by October 18th or face losing their jobs. It's starting to happen. In the last couple of weeks, vaccination rates are up about 20%. In the meantime, more than 5,700 state employees have applied for a vaccine exemption. Fewer than half have been granted, but some are getting accommodations like working remotely. We talked to the Oregon Nurses Association and it says the state of Oregon is also rejecting certain vaccine exemptions. It told us labor and delivery nurses at Legacy Silverton Hospital have had all of their religious exemptions denied. Most of their medical exemptions were turned down too. This affects 18 nurses, which means almost half of the department could get fired. Legacy is standing firm, saying it thoroughly reviewed the requests before saying no. We should also note the Oregon Nurses Association says the vast majority of its members, 80%, have already been vaccinated. There could also be a COVID vaccine mandate for students in Portland Public Schools. The school board discussed that possibility last night. They heard from public health officials, a pediatrician, and an emergency room doctor, all of whom supported getting more kids vaccinated. We know that uh, coronaviruses in particular are very, very good at um, creating variants. They're fast at it. And so from a public health perspective and the longevity of this pandemic, the least number of people, whether they're little or big, getting infected and giving the virus a, a playground to create new variants is really important. Some board members express concern about alienating families who may be vaccine hesitant or have trouble accessing the shots. It's not clear yet if or when the board will vote on a mandate. Pfizer is asking the FDA to approve its vaccine for kids as young as five. Right now, COVID shots are only approved for people 12 and older. The FDA will spend several weeks looking at the data before potentially authorizing the vaccine for emergency use. The Pfizer trials gave young kids two smaller doses of the vaccine, but they still produce protective antibodies. The little ones also had some of the same side effects as adults, including a sore arm and fatigue. Well, the school board in Newburgh just decided to keep its ban on all political symbols in schools. We've been covering the back and forth since the summer. That's when a director on the board suggested getting rid of Black Lives Matter and pride flags in district buildings. Mike Benner explains the impact of last night's vote. This is not a functioning business meeting. This is an after party of four members. So I say, let's just vote, get it over with. Like the many meetings before, it, fireworks at the Newburgh School Board's virtual meeting Tuesday night. By a vote of four to three, the school board elected to rid district buildings of images that depict support or opposition relating to a political, quasi-political or controversial topic. Black Lives Matter and pride images fall under that umbrella. We don't pay our teachers to 
to push their political views on our students. That is not their place. Their place is to teach the approved curriculum. And that is all this policy does is ensure that that is happening in our schools. Director Brian Shannon was the driving force behind the policy, while Director Brandy Penner was one of the opposing voices. I think the point of this is to show that you are trying to sow division with extremist views. You have no interest in listening to community. A community that's been through a lot in the last few weeks. We learned that high school students participated in a Snapchat group chat called Slave Trade, where they joked about buying black classmates. We also learned about a Mabel Rush Elementary School staffer who showed up to work in blackface to protest the vaccine mandate for teachers. She has since been fired. All of this as the school board decides what can and cannot be displayed in a classroom. Motion passes 4-3. Tuesday night's vote may mark the end of the school board's discussion on the matter, but as Director right. Penner pointed out... It's going to be now our community, our staff, and our students who are left to fight this. Before that 4-3 to three vote, Director Rebecca Pyro suggested letting a superintendent standing committee handle this political sign issue. That was voted down, and the Newburgh Education Association released a statement on Facebook expressing frustration. They say it is clear that personal politics are stronger than any desire to come together as a community. I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. A lot of you have told us you want to hear more about climate change, so I want to call your attention to this. It is a sobering new study published in the journal Science. It predicted what a child born this year will live through compared to what their grandparents faced. It found on average there will be seven times as many heat waves, twice as many wildfires, and almost three times as many droughts, crop failures, and floods. Experts caution that is the outlook if the pace of global warming continues unchecked. If you'd like to see more reporting on climate change, both the problems and the possible solutions, visit our website, kgw.com.